my wife and I felt we had an opportunity to really push the envelope. Once we had decided that we were going to build a house, this is the kind of house that we were going to build. A super insulated, super airtight, super comfortable house. I was a nuclear engineer on an aircraft carrier. And so I was real interested in thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. So when I got out of the Navy, I wanted to get my engineering degree. And I took a course at RIT that talked about homes so efficient that they don't need furnaces anymore. Back in the 70s, during the oil embargo, super insulated homes were being built, but a lot of those homes failed because they didn't have a ventilation system. So these German physicists added a ventilation system. Passive house is just a standard. It doesn't tell you how to build the house. It just gives you certain metrics to, to build to. Every single place in this house was designed so that there is some sort of insulation between the inside and the outside at all of our joints, at all of our window intersections, at all of our corners. We've got 16 inch thick walls filled with cellulose insulation. It's extremely quiet up here. Our neighbor runs a landscaping business and we don't hear the mulch trucks being delivered. The house is so airtight, we don't wanna be blowing our air outside. And that includes bath fans, range hood, and a dryer. So our dryer is a condensing dryer. It's gonna dehumidify all the clothes in the drum and pump the water, just like your de dehumidifier can, pump the water down the same drain as the washer. I could only find one or two houses that were tighter. So I, I would say top five tightest houses in the world is a, is a fair statement. This is the ventilation system. This is the lungs of the house. We've got fresh air being drawn in. It's gonna exchange heat with the outgoing air and then be distributed throughout the house. It goes into the bedrooms and the living space and then travels throughout the house. At the same time, the stale air is being pulled out of the kitchen and the bathrooms, goes through the heat exchanger, and then gets blown outside. We don't have dust. We don't have cobwebs. We don't have bugs getting into the house. We don't have pollen for anybody who has allergies. If you burn popcorn in the microwave in two hours, the smell is gone inside the house. So the ventilation system is constantly bringing that fresh air in, and every three hours, all of the air in the house has been exchanged and filtered. When you take a shower, warm water is gonna go down the drain. We're gonna reclaim up to 50% of the heat going down the drain and put that heat into the hot water tank. What we've done is we've maximized our overhang. We've got a three foot overhang and that is gonna fully shade the house in the summer and allow full sun in the winter. We're bringing in so much extra heat that on a sunny day, if it's 20 degrees outside, we don't have to turn our heat on. Uh, roughly a hair dryer's worth of energy will heat this whole house. It's extremely comfortable temperature wise and humidity wise. We're able to maintain 70 degrees inside the house, whether it's 10 degrees outside or whether it's 110 degrees outside. No builder is gonna say they build an inefficient house. Every builder has to meet code. Code is the worst house you can legally build. We're using close to 70% less energy than had this house been built to code. The first thing somebody can do is get an energy audit done with the blower door test. Focus your, your attention on energy conservation first. That's usually the lowest lying fruit. There is a payback for it, and the payback is quicker as energy costs go up. And you're also improving the comfort of your house, which I think is something that everybody can relate to.